Hello, today we'll be going through all of the 3D limit questions that have been asked in the past three and a half years over exams one and three, where they show up uh, to you know, get an idea of how to solve any of these uh, types of problems that they might throw at us for the final. So uh, this first question, we are given this big, really scary looking limit, and we are asked to evaluate what uh, this uh, constant a must be so that the limit is equal to 12. Well, this problem is actually um, pretty pretty easy if you if you just notice we can rearrange this and it becomes a lot easier. So we can rearrange this whole expression in here as x to the fourth minus y to the fourth minus 3a x squared plus y squared over x squared plus y squared. And we can simplify this down a little bit. We can factor this guy here to, to turn it into x squared plus y squared times x squared minus y squared. And then our minus 3a x squared plus y squared over x squared plus y squared. And all of this is equal to, equal to 12 uh, as as x and y approach 0 and 0. So if you uh, look, we can cancel out an, an uh, x, plus, x squared plus y squared from all of these terms. So cancel that out, cancel it out with the denominator. And we are left with this guy, which is much, much easier to solve if we condense everything together. There we go. And we know that this is a limit as x and y both approach 0. So this whole thing right here is just going to be 0. So we can say 0 minus 3a equals 12. So a equals negative 4. OK, consider this function on its maximal def, uh, domain of definition. Calculate the limit as x and y both approach 0 of that function. So really, our, our approach to these is uh, uh, see if we can factor anything, uh, see if we can just directly plug in the values of x and y to get an answer, or uh, see if we can, if both of those things fail, apply the two-path test to prove uh, beyond any doubt that the limit does not exist. So let's start off just by plugging in 0 and 0 to see if we get anything good. So 2 plus 0 times 0 cubed over 1 plus 0 squared minus 0 squared, well, that's just equal to 2. And then uh, there, is, there is our answer. You may be tempted to choose B because, uh, <laughs> well, I hope you wouldn't be because the function is, is defined at 0, 0. And we, we, we just found that. So there's, uh, there's no issues. OK, moving on. Number four, we're looking for the limit as x and y both approach 0 of xy squared over x to the fourth plus y squared. So if we plug in, we will see that we get 0 over 0, which is no good. And there's no real uh, 3D version of L'Hopital's rule, so we're kind of left with just factoring. So it doesn't. it also doesn't look like we can uh, do any do any factoring. So let's try to apply the two path test. Let's approach let's approach this limit along the x axis, which will be for y equals zero. And so if y equals zero, this will be x squared times zero over x to the fourth uh, uh, plus zero, where x is approaching zero. And we see that we're still getting zero over zero, which is no good. So let's approach it from, I don't know, x equals x equals y. How about that? So for every y, we'll replace it with an x. And that will look like x cubed over x to the fourth plus x squared. And we can factor out an x squared to get x over x squared plus 1. And we see that while this guy up here was 
undefined because we're getting 0 over 0. This one, when x approaches 0, we get 0 over 1, which is just equal to 0, which is different from being undefined. And we've shown through the two-path test, because we're getting uh, a different answer, that there is no one limit that this function approaches on every path. So it does not exist. OK, we're considering two limits and uh, just testing whether whether or not they exist uh, or not. And some sometimes they like to do this, throwing multiple uh, limits into one. But usually, that's a good hint that uh, one that both of them are relatively uh, easy to figure out. So let's look at limit two just to start off with. If we plug in zero and zero, we will get zero plus zero over one plus one, which is of course, real zero. So we know that limit two is going to be zero. And now we can move uh, to limit one, knowing that our real options are uh, zero or does not exist. So just taking a look at it, there are no easy, obvious ways to factor this thing. So let's try uh, the two path test, because if, you know, if we do plug in zero and zero, we have no constants in here. So we will get 0 over 0, which is uh, undefined. But to prove, that the, to prove that the limit is undefined, we need to use uh, the two-path test. So let's approach it on the x-axis again. So when y is equal to 0, this will be 0 over x squared plus 0 plus 0 as x approaches 0, which is still 0 over 0. But then if we approach it on x equals y, we will get x squared over x squared plus x squared plus x squared, which is going to be 1 third. And it doesn't matter which way I substitute in here. We could substitute y for x, and we'll get uh, y squared over y squared plus y squared plus y squared. But as you see, we're getting two different, two different answers here, which uh, by the two-path test, means that our limit does not exist. OK, same kind of thing. We're dealing with two different limits, and we have to test whether or not uh, they exist. And if they do, we have to find uh, what, that, what that limit's value is. So taking a look at number two again, they, they do like to throw these ones with e in here to see if you remember the fact that e to the 0 is 1. Um, as, as long as you know this, uh, Often you can you can breeze breeze through this pretty quickly because of course if we plug zero zero directly in we're going to get one over one plus one which is going to be one half so limit two is one half and and there is our answer but let's make sure by proving that one does not exist so uh, just like usual let's approach it on y equals zero. And we see that our uh, expression in here becomes 3x minus 0 over root x squared plus 0, which is 3x over root x, which is just x, which is 3. But let's see, we got to make sure, uh, because remember, the two-path test can never prove that your limit exists. It can only be used to prove uh, that because there, there's some uh, that the two paths produce different uh, you know, values for the limit that proves that the limit does not exist. We would have to test an infinite number of paths uh, and I'll prove that they all exist in order to actually prove the existence of the limit through the two path test. So uh, using the other path that we like, which is y equals x, we find that we get 3x minus 2x over root x squared plus x squared, which is going to be x over uh, root 2x squared, which is going to be x over root 2x, which is 1 over root 2, which is obviously not equal to 3, so our limit does not exist. OK, if f of x, f of x, y is equal to this uh, expression here, we are looking for uh, 
L, which is the limit as we approach uh, f of x along the, as, as we approach 0, 0 along the x-axis, and m be the limit as we approach 0, 0 along the line y equals x. So these, these are the two paths that we're, we're already, already using, uh, so this, this should be pretty, pretty simple for us. And this is essentially uh, letting us know, you know, we're applying the two-path test where uh, this is uh, a, a little bit of a weird way of phrasing it, but all this is is the two-path test. So let's find L. We know that that's going to be the limit as x and y approach 0 and 0 of 3x squared plus yx over x squared plus y squared. And we're approaching that along the y-axis, so sorry, the x-axis, so y equals 0. If we plug y equals 0 in, we will see that we get 3x squared over x squared, which is just 3. So L is equal to 3. We see that in two answer choices. And then uh, let's evaluate for M. So we're approaching on the line y equals x. So we can plug uh, for every x that we see. We'll, we'll plug in a y. And we will get 3y squared plus y squared over, oh, there's no root, whoops, over y squared plus y squared, which is going to be 4y squared over 2y squared, which is going to be equal to 2. And so there's our answer. Okay, this is a little bit of a weird one. It's not necessarily, um, you know, the normal way that they ask 3D limit questions, but this does incorporate some of the uh, skills that we're used to using. So they're asking which of the statements are true. The function is continuous at 0, 0. The partial derivative with respect to x is defined at 0, 0, as 0. And the function is differentiable outside of 0, 0. So if we take a look at, at this piecewise function up here, uh, and, and let's just draw an arbitrary uh, kind of graph that could be, you know, uh, some, somewhat rem reminiscent of what this function is. So we, we see that when x is equal to 0, um, you know, we have some we have some bad behavior. We're not we're not defined at zero at zero zero because we will get zero over zero. And since this is a three D uh, limit, it, we we can't really. Uh, I, I'm I'm only doing this in two D, and this is completely arbitrary. Uh, but this this would be much more complicated to graph than I can do off the top of my head. So let's say all is well up until zero. We are undefined at zero. And then we, we keep going uh, perfectly fine after that. Because if we, if we look up here, there's nothing, there's nothing else that's wrong with this function. It'll, it, it will only encounter some, some issues at, at 0, 0. That will be its only asymptote or whole. But if we look, uh, we can apply the two-path test for x equals y and get y squared over 2y squared, which is 1 half. Or, or we could apply it for y equals 0 and get 0 over x squared plus 0 as x approaches 0, which is just undefined. So we know that this limit does not exist. So there is no one value that this function approaches. Uh, no matter, um, all, there is no one value that all the paths uh, that we could take along this function approach as we approach 0, 0. And we see that we are defined at 0, at 0, 0, uh, that, that f of x, y is just equal to 0. So we've just kind of established that our function is not, con is not continuous at 0, at zero, zero. This, is, this is incorrect. Because in order for us to be continuous, uh, we need to have a limit uh, at uh, f of x, y needs to have a limit at 0, 0. Also, uh, so, so we can go down here. Any answer choice with 1 in it will be incorrect. And also, we know that all of the above is not correct. We also see that the function uh, is, is differentiable outside of 0, 0. We're never, no matter what values we plug in, uh, we are always going to get some, uh, some, some, some value out of f of x and y. And there shouldn't be any uh, sharp turns 
So we are, we're perfectly happy with that. Our function should be differentiable outside of zero, zero. And then uh, that actually gives us, uh, well, that doesn't actually give us our answer because it still it very well could be that only one of these statements is correct. But in the end, uh, you, you might be tempted to say, okay, well, we know that there, we can't really take a derivative um, at zero, but the, because we need to be continuous. Uh, but in fact, this be only be this is a partial derivative here. The definition for a partial derivative is a little more lax compared to, uh, you know, the the normal derivatives that we're used to. And this is actually true. The partial derivative of zero uh, with respect to zero with respect to x, sorry, is just zero. And I I wish I had the proof behind that. Um, but I don't. And uh, if that's something that people would like really explained well, I'd be perfectly willing to do that. But for now, the answer is 2 and 3.